Number five then from paper two, the 2016 higher mass. Here it is. Find the angle between two vectors. Just six marks. Usually it's about seven. And again, it's telling you to make sure that you get these in the correct direction. If you're looking for the angle between two vectors, you want the components of the vectors that radiate away from the point. But it's making sure of that by having a separate part A when it asks for these two. What are the components of AB and what are the components of AC? Now, there's just one mark each, so you could just state them by looking at this. So you could just say A to B, negative 2 to negative 10 is 8 back. 2 to 18 is 16 forward. 5 to 7 is 2 forward. And just put that down. Or you could spell it all out, but you're still just going to get one mark, so it's B minus A. So that's negative 10, 18, 7. Take away negative 2, 2, 5. And then negative 10, take away negative 2 is negative 8. 18, take away 2 is 16. 7, take away 5 is 2. And that gets a mark. But you could just have stated it by looking at the moves. And similarly for AC, there'll be one mark for this, which you could just state. Maybe it will just state it this time. Instead of saying that will be C minus A, etc, etc. Maybe we'll just be brave and say, how do I get from A to C? Well, negative 2 to negative 4 means going back 2. 2 to negative 6 means going back 8. 5 to 21, however, is going forward 16. And that's worth a mark. Then part B, hence or otherwise... Find the size of the angle BAC. In other words, what's this angle in here? And for that, you're going to use the scalar product. You're going to say that, well, the rearrangement of it. The scalar product means the length of AB times the length of AC times the cosine of the angle is the scalar product. Or if you like, the cosine of the angle BAC will be the scalar product. So that will be AB dot AC over the length of AB times the length of AC. Now just stating this on its own isn't worth a mark. Now you can either work those parts out separately at the side and then put them into it, or you can just put them into it straight away. In the end there's going to be three marks for evaluating those three parts and putting the figures in. Maybe we'll just this time state it separately. So what is the scalar product? What is AB dot AC? It takes a bit more writing if I do that. Well, that'll just be multiply the corresponding components and add them up to get a scalar, a single number. I'll just show that. So that'll be a negative 2. I've actually got these opposite way around to that. That'll be a negative 8 times a negative 2 plus a 16 times a negative 8 plus a 2 times a 16. Just put them all in little insertion brackets. So that's 16, but take away 48, 128, and then add 32. So that's 48 away is negative 80. That's worth a mark. As soon as you've got a scalar product which is negative, that means that one of the vectors isn't going the same direction, it's going in the opposite direction to the other one, so the angle must be more than 90 degrees. Then the length of AB now, I'm not sure if you're allowed just to do this, they've got exactly the same components, just in different orders. When you perform the Pythagoras in them, they'll give the same answer. So I don't know whether to state them separately or just put them in one go. Maybe I'll just put them separately. So AB, I kind of got this other way around. So that'll be the square root of negative 8 squared plus 16 squared plus 2 squared. So that's the square root of, again, you can just take that in your calculator. It's getting quite big now. 64 and 256 and 4. So that's the square root of... 324, which means that, I'm sure you could just state this, AC is going to be the same, it's going to be root 324. Now there's just one mark for getting both of them, presumably because they were both the same. Now in the marking scheme, that actually is a perfect square when it comes down to 18. You don't actually have to have the 18 to get the mark because, oops, since you're going to be multiplying a square root by a square root down here, 
you'll just end up with that number in the middle. Right, put them into this formula then. So that means you've got negative 80 over root 324 times root 324. Now you get the third mark. So finally, angle BAC, and I can put the angle sign to the front now, will be inverse cos of that. It'll be the inverse cos of this thing. Inverse cos of negative 80 over, now of course that just becomes 324. And yes, that cancels down, but it doesn't matter because you're just going to type that in because you don't know your inverse causes. And when you press the button, you get 104, I'll put it down, 104.2949 and so on. And that's in degrees. I'll just write it again. So angle BAC is 104.3 degrees. And that answer is the fourth mark. Now, there is an alternative technique, which is not to use vectors, because it did say, or otherwise, which is to say, well, that's just going to be a triangle. You know how to work out angles and triangles. And more than that, this triangle here is actually, when you look at these numbers here, this is an isosceles triangle. So ignoring that, you could work out the length of BC and use the cosine rule in reverse. But since it's isosceles, it means you've got this little right angle triangle, which would have half the required angle. Still need to work out lengths. So I'll still need the lengths of those, and I still need the length of those parts. So I'll still have to say, or just demonstrate its isosceles by saying, well, AC equals the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 8 squared plus 16 squared, which equals the other one, but maybe I'll put that down afterwards. So as before, 4 plus 64 plus 256 is the square root of 324, and AB is also the square root of 324 and work out the length of BC, or CB. That'll be the square root of, and then we've got negative 10, or you could just say, how far is it from negative four to 10? Well, that's six back, so that's negative six squared. From negative six to 18, that's an awful lot, that's 24 forward. And from 21 to seven, that's negative 14. That's 36, that's 196, those are ones that you know. However, that, 24 squared. Well, that's two times 12, so it's two squared times 12 squared, four, but you just use your calculator. Four times 144, 16, 17, 576. So that's 612, 812 minus four, 808. And just leave it that way. So there's the three lengths. And then in this triangle, You've got, in this case, it's the sine of x you'd be using here. You know that the sine of x is the opposite, which is half of this. So it's a half of root 808 divided by this length, which was root 324. So x would be inverse sine of, you could just leave it on the roots. Or if you knew, happened to know that that was going to be 18, then that to the bottom would make it into 36. But no, I'll just leave it that way. 808 over 2 root 324. And then press those buttons. And you get 52.147 and so on. Which means the angle BAC will be two times that which is 104 point, and that'll be 294 and so on, which is, as before, 104.3. But when you look at all that working, you'd probably think, it's not really worth it, is it? It's not really worth it. You're better off using the scalar product.